Okay, so we have this old apothecary furniture. It's gigantic. And uh, it's got about 64 drawers in it. And I promised that I would get this uh, out, pulled out, and uh, work on it and refinish and make it presentable so we can sell it. So uh, I have my nephew here and he's gonna help me with that. First, we need to pull this out and then I'm gonna have you pull every single one of those drawers out and stack them up out here, okay? Okay. Okay, got all the drawers out and they're all stacked up. So the, the furniture piece was missing four of these poles, which were really hard to locate. I looked everywhere online for a long, long time. And found, finally, I found them at a website called Old Good Things. And they were like $12 each or something like that. But they were hard to find because they actually have the labels on the top. Almost everything I found had the labels on the front here. But these had uh, the ones on the top. And I just wanted to wait until I had exactly the matching ones. And we did eventually find them. Uh, thank goodness, much cleaner than the ones that are on there. But we're gonna take care of that now. So uh, my nephew is gonna hit every single one of these with uh, steel wool, and knock all of that flaky rust off of them. And then uh, we're not gonna paint them, we're just gonna clear coat them. So with their age showing. So, you ready, Bailey? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're super excited, aren't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the work ethic of this generation is amazing. Okay, so it's no good trying to work on this thing while it's back there. So, I'm going to pull it out and move it down toward the shop at the other end so that I have access to some tools and stuff. Uh, the good thing is I've got these rollers and it's not ultra heavy, so I can easily get it on these rollers and I should just be able to walk it down without any problems until I hit a little screw or a rock with that roller. So my nephew pulled all of these drawers out and uh, they're still pretty dirty. We're going to get them all cleaned up. What he did was use some steel wool and just knocked the, uh, the loose rust off of all of them. And then I gave him this piece of cardboard uh, with a hole cut out of it. And very quickly, one after another, we just put them on and sprayed a clear coat on that to stop those handles from rusting any further. Uh, I'm not a fan of painting stuff if I don't have to. I like the original look. And uh, so they're a little bit rusty, but they're clear coated and they won't rust anymore. At least uh, not till that clear coat wears off. So. so now we just have these four drawers here. They didn't have the poles on them. And uh, I had these made by an Amish fellow who's local. And uh, he made them with the exact same joinery as is in the originals. And that worked out pretty well. Little, little spray paint bleed there, or what, I'm not sure what he used. Uh, but not too bad. So I have to get the little uh, drawer poles onto these. And then I have the entire collection complete because when I first picked it up, it was missing four drawers. So uh, it will be 100% complete after today. Okay, so there it is. Super dirty and uh, definitely needs some TLC. So let me uh, take you around it and show you kind of what I'm dealing with here. So 
First things, first things first is this board here. Somebody put on some self-adhering like laminate, linoleum type stuff. So that's gotta come off and then I'll have to uh, stain it or dye it to match this. Um, another problem is that here and uh, in a couple places and on some of the actual pull-out drawers, somebody just decided to clean their paintbrush off. And I have Googled and YouTube and Googled and YouTube and searched and searched, and I can't find a way to get this paint off without uh, removing the varnish too. I mean, there are lots of theories like soak it in oil overnight and then try to wipe it off. I tried a few things and Sadly, I couldn't come up with anything. Maybe there's somebody out there who knows, but by the time you see this video, it's gonna to be too late. So I'm gonna go ahead and just sand off these little spots and uh, then try to match that stain as much as possible. So uh, the end piece fell off. I have it back there. I need to reassemble that. This is kind of coming out. So I need to uh, address this and get it uh, connected back on in the right way. And we've got a chipped piece of quarter round, which if I can find the exact same quarter round somewhere in the factory, then I'll just patch that in and stain it. If not, I'll remove that entire piece of quarter round and just replace it. So, uh, and then one last kind of major thing. And that's this side over here. So uh, we've got, some breakage here so I'm gonna have to you know put that back in and glue that up and uh, fasten it down into the correct profile and it's also separating back here so that's just a matter of putting those holes back in the or that those nails in the right holes again and then uh, add a few more to cinch it up against the back and the bottom will be good to go it's a fair bit of work but it's nothing that I can't handle even as a complete beginner at least that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> Time will tell if that's the truth or not. Uh, you know, I like to go big. So <laughs> if you don't know that already from the channel. Uh, and I tend to find out that things are not as simple as I thought they were in the beginning. It's, it's like, uh, I'm just too optimistic. Too dang optimistic. Okay, so let me get started with this. I'm going to start with that board on top. And get that off and see if I can remove that linoleum stuff. So... Step one. Well, came off easy enough. I hope the rest of the project goes that easy. Uh, <laughs> apparently, it's just sitting on there. So I guess I can go ahead and get to work on pulling this laminate off. Man. That would be amazing if I could get that to peel off and still leave the color underneath it. But I have serious doubt that that's going to be possible. Uh, first thing I need to do is get it cleaned off. Dang. Dang! Okay, so through the magic of video editing, it is 90 minutes later and it's all off. So I'll take it, I'll take it. That could have been a three day job depending on you know how much that stuff wanted to adhere to the surface. But uh, it came off pretty quick once I decided to turn the chisel over. Uh, I initially started like this so that it wouldn't dig in, uh, but then found out this was the way to go and the scuffing is very minimal it's pretty dusty still right now it's you know uh, it needs to be waxed but uh, yeah I'm so happy that that was actually even doable 
Awesome. Okay, so as much as I would love to put a screw into that, uh, I can't have any modern screw heads uh, showing up on here. So theoretically, I could put one in from the other side and hope that it doesn't come out past the face here. But I think the uh, thing I need to do is get some long finish nails and uh, do it like it would have been done. So. Time to go hunt the right nails. So I was just looking through all these different boxes trying to find the exact right uh, finish nails. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I have the perfect thing. And it's right here. A gigantic bucket of really long finish nails. So I think I'll just take a handful of these guys and we'll be good to go. Well, I'm going to have to pre-drill those holes because that wood is hard. Oh, my gosh. Uh, bent that nail like it was. Uh, anyway. Okay, so here's this piece here. It's the original piece, and it's in actually great condition. Uh, I just need to uh, back those nails out and clean it up a little bit. And then I'll just use the exact same process. I'll pre-drill the holes and use those uh, really large finish nails in there. So won't be able to see it here. Uh, but before we get to that, I just noticed that just like on the other side, we've got a little bit of separation going on here. So I'm going to have to get that uh, pressed back up and uh, secured and attached back to the main body. So I don't know what it is about the ends wanting to pull off. But yeah, one step forward, two steps back. Well, I'm really glad that didn't go on over. <laughs> All right. Once again. Got it. So this end board here is just basically finish nailed into these shelves. And I don't think, I mean, clearly it's pulled out once over the years, so I don't think that's quite enough. I I drove the uh, original finish nails uh, back in because they'd kind of popped out. And I think it needs just a little bit more something solid to anchor to. So what I'm going to do is I have this piece of wood here. And I'm going to cut it at length and stick it right in the corner. And then I can use uh, regular screws because they won't be visible. And I'll mount that all along the back. And then I'll have something solid that I can 
uh, put those finished nails in to hold that and it won't it won't come back out again and then uh, I'm gonna do the exact same thing over here this one is in a little bit worse condition so it's gonna be just a bit more of a challenge to get squared away Uh, all this really old wood is super hard. I guess I'm going to have to pre-drill that one as well. So I drew, I pre-drilled it already once, uh, but the bit was too small. Those are pretty honky screws, big old chunky things. So I'm going to have to drill it out a little bit bigger. Thing strapped down. Okay. Probably should just switch over to torque drill and torque screws. This is taking way longer than it should. <laughs> Yes. Oh yeah, so it's really starting to come back together. So uh, this side is really solid now and uh, it's not gonna separate anymore. This last side here, and then I just have to address the paint issues and get it cleaned up. That'll be the bottom half and the uh, top half is still to come. And I almost forgot, I still have to do this quarter round deal with that situation so uh, it, it really feels great to be getting this thing squared back away because uh, we bought it a few years ago and it's just been sitting in the building uh, you know gathering dust with raccoons climbing all over it and uh, yeah once I pulled it out I didn't realize how much really needed to be done with it but uh, one single afternoon and it's already almost back in shape so that's amazing uh, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story about this piece too. So, uh, let me get that and then fix the quarter round and, uh, the bottom half will be done. Okay. So basically did the same thing on this side that I did on there and, uh, pulled that together really nicely. So, um, can't deny the damage is there, but it's a good honest repair and yeah, it's all together and solid, which is amazing. So, now we can start to work on the uh, cosmetic stuff. Okay, so next thing is this piece of cord around. And uh, I was hoping that I might be able to actually find it. Um, but sadly, it's missing. So 
I really don't like the patched in look. I'd like to have one piece of cord around all the way down. And this is really long, so I'd have to find a pretty long piece of it. I'm gonna go upstairs and see if we have something. I know we've got lots of trim laying all over the place, so maybe I do. Okay, so here's a big pile of trim. And uh, it's kind of like drawing straws. You don't know if you're gonna get the short straw. It's a, actually, that's a perfect piece of trim. It has kind of the old look. Maybe it's even cedar or something. But it's not long enough. It's missing about three feet. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Well, lots of baseboard, but no cord around. So, worst case scenario, I can use that to patch it in. Okay, so I'm not gonna look a gift horse in the mouth. Uh, it is what it is, that's the piece I got. So I'm just gonna patch that in. The good thing is that it doesn't wrap around. There's no like 45 angles to cut or anything like that. It's just a straight long piece that goes on the, uh, the front face of the piece of furniture. Yeah, I just need to cut this guy off here so it's flat and then butt that up and then nail it all back in and uh, color this guy so it matches. Okay, so a good thing is it's well ventilated in here. <laughs> Lots of missing windows. Uh, I have this uh, General Stains product, General Finishes product, and it's actually not a stain, it's a dye, and it's called Merlot. So I always have terrible luck when I try to match what it looks like on my computer monitor with what it actually looks like on the wood. So, and I know a stain or a dye can look different on different kinds of wood, so it's, you know, it's just anybody's uh, guess what something's gonna look like. So I did my best to pick out what I thought would be a good match and uh, there's no better way to find out than just to apply it and see what happens. I'm sure there's a more professional way to do this, but uh, sorry, I've got a mask. Okay, so I'm sure there's a more professional way to do this, uh, but I didn't have time to check out YouTube today before I came, so we're just gonna experiment with it. I think we can give it multiple treatments and it'll get darker and darker each time. So. Let me uh, give it a few coats and then we'll come back and see what the final result is. Okay, so there's the first pass and uh, the light colored wood is still visible through it. So I'm gonna give that a second to to dry up and then I'll I'll take a second pass and see if we can get a little bit closer match. Okay, so it was hard to tell if it was a match just because the uh, the other the rest of it was just kind of dry and and uh, not uh, hydrated. So you know, because when you when you polish something, it really explodes out in color and look and so forth. So I just I just hit it with a wet rag so I could see what it's going to look like when it's all kind of uniformly moisturized and 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 revived. So. I think it's a pretty close match. I might have to go over it one more time uh, just to darken it a touch more. So tell me what you think. It is really close. I mean, if you look at that side and that side over there, they're both a little bit lighter than that material in the middle. Uh, but I think I just need to darken it just a touch more and uh, it'll be perfect. Definitely better than a big giant splotch of white paint that was there before.
Okay, so the quarter round wasn't the absolute perfect match that I thought it was, uh, but it does uh, blend pretty well and it doesn't attract the eye like it did when it was just missing the part. So, you know, if you don't know what you're looking for, you won't notice it. Um, so at the moment, it's starting to come back to life, but it totally needs a good cleaning and it needs uh, to be rehydrated. And uh, I'm gonna put some furniture polish on it, put some wax on it. So uh, that's when it'll really start to come alive. So before I can get to that, I need to go put the drawer poles on the drawers, get the drawers cleaned, uh, remove a little more paint off of this top section here, get it stained and dyed so that it matches up. And uh, except for a good cleaning, this section doesn't really need much. Um, I think if I recall, no, it's all complete. Oh, it's loose, that's what it is. So I need to tack that in. But other than that, just a little, little work on that paint and this guy's good to go. So yeah, I have to admit, every time I start a project like this, I, I have some self doubts. <laughs> I don't know if I can actually do this, if I'm gonna ruin it. And uh, it's gone both ways plenty of times. I've uh, done things that came out pretty well and then other things ended up getting ruined. Uh, it looks like I'm past the curve on this one and I think I'm gonna be able to get it in pretty good shape. So I'm super happy about that and uh, it's a pretty good feeling. Uh, but not there yet, not past the finish line. Okay, so nothing would be worse than having the drawer pulls off center. And I'm gonna do them strictly by measurements, but I just had this for visual confirmation. Okay, so I've got the measurements set both uh, vertically and horizontally and uh, it's perfectly centered. So now we just gotta screw them in. Let's move around on me. Okay. So how many of you out there if I put one of these on just a little bit crooked, <laughs> how many of you guys would be bothered by that? Just a little bit. <laughs> ah, that one's straight. So I want to take these home so I can clean them in my living room where it's nice and toasty tonight, but I don't know if I can fit them all in the vehicle. Uh, probably can, but might not be able to see the road. Okay, so I hit it once with the uh, die, and it's pretty close. You can still see that light colored wood showing through there on the left hand side. So I'm gonna go home and uh, recondition all of these. And then tomorrow, when I come back, I'll hit that one more time and it should darken up and be a perfect match. So, okay, I'm ready to go home, get warm. Can't feel my fingers. Can't feel my fingers. These things, oh my gosh. So, okay, so we're back. And uh, last night I took all those drawers home and uh, worked on them. And I just got in here this morning and I've wiped this down as well. Let me show you what I'm using. It's called Feed and Wax. Uh, first time I've ever used it, not a product endorsement, just uh, something that happened to be available. And I did like it in the sense that it's not the kind of wax that comes in a can. It's real, you know, real robust. And you have to do like little circles, like you're polishing boots in the army or whatever. It's more of a, like a 
gel and it wipes on really quick so you can uh, get right to it. So still a little bit, it's just freshly applied so it will uh, kind of stabilize there and uh, I'll rub it a little bit and it'll take that sheen off. So yeah, it's looking good. It really darkened up with that wax. And uh, let me show you the end here as well. This side is getting closer and closer. Every coat I put on is a little bit darker. And if I stand back, you can tell it's already pretty close. Uh, I think two more applications and it'll be basically an exact perfect match. So let me, uh, I got a ton of these drawers to get in. Like I said, I took every one of them home last night and uh, waxed them all up, cleaned them and waxed them. And I found two little culprits here, or two little guys that I have to deal with. So this one's got paint like the, the main body did. And there's a little spot there. So I'm gonna sand those and stain them and uh, get all these back in. Then we can bring the top down, set it up there, get it waxed and cleaned up and see what the whole thing looks like together. Uh, one other quick thing I wanted to mention, I'm gonna set this down on the floor because once I get the drawers in, it's really long and heavy, and I don't want, you know, any sag going on there. And uh, I don't know if you've ever dealt with, like, dry concrete, but it can really suck the moisture out of your hands. And uh, it's just, a, it just sucks moisture, it holds moisture, and can wreak all kinds of havoc with furniture. So uh, I'm not going to leave this sitting on the concrete floor. Anytime I put it down, I just uh, lay out some wood and uh, that'll act as like a prophylactic barrier between uh, this dry concrete and the, uh, and the furniture. So uh, I need to hop this off and then I'll start putting the drawers in. Gosh, dang. Well, because of expansion and contraction due to humidity, uh, some of the drawers are a little bit too big <laughs> for the holes. So I have to, it's like a, a hunt game. So I have to hunt for the, the cubby hole that'll actually fit the drawer. So. Okay. All right, that one needs to dry and one more little coat. Uh, but yeah, it's looking pretty good. And uh, I'm not getting super granular in terms of cleaning it up because it just doesn't make any sense in this building. There's so much dust in here and until I get the whole place power washed and the dust under management, uh, it doesn't make any sense to go through it, you know, go over it with a toothbrush, but uh, I'm really happy with what I see, and now we can go get busy on the, the top section. All right, we have the top down here, and it uh, looks like for the most part it just needs a cleaning. Uh, needs to have the shelves put back in, 
And uh, I did notice one problem down here at the end, just like the others, that we've got separation going on. So, so I need to do uh, all the repair work on this and get that uh, secured back up. And uh, once I get that done, we can give it a cleaning. And then hopefully I can beg my brother to come over <laughs> uh, and uh, help me get that lifted up onto the other section there. And uh, we'll be able to get some photographs of it for Instagram. So, okay. Okay, and then we also have some separation here. And I've got this clamp on to pull it together so that I can uh, refasten it. But when I take this clamp off, I've got like a good quarter of an inch or more of space there. So uh, I'm going to pre-drill those and sink in some spikes to hold that as well. Uh, look at these circular saw marks. Uh, there's actually dust embedded in it. That's why it's so visible. But uh, that's old rough sawn lumber. And then I guess... They used a finish saw on that side because there's no marks. So rough saw on, and then the uh, surface was, I guess, some kind of a finish blade. So uh, interesting. Okay, so thank goodness my brother doesn't live too far away. I called him and he came over and helped me get that behemoth up on there. So it was just the two of us. And for a minute there, I wasn't sure we were gonna be able to do it, but we got it done. So. Now I'm going to finish wiping down and waxing the shelves and then I'm going to wax the uh, top area and it will be 100% together. So this bottom has rough sawn lumber side up and uh, I kind of like it. I think I'm going to put the rough side up on the shelves. They actually just sit in these, uh, they have these little crossbars here. And uh, you can choose any one to rearrange the shelves at the height that you like. And uh, you can easily just pull it out and flip it over. If you prefer the finished side, you can flip that up. I'm going to put the rough sawn side up. So. One down, eight more to go. Done. Oh my gosh. Done. Ah. Uh, so I promised you guys just a little bit of a story. Uh, this piece of furniture I got a long time ago, two or three years ago now. And a lot of people have checked it out. They've seen it. It was here when we had... Uh, uh, our little sale here at the building and lots of people came in and it catches people's attention and there's lots of conversation about it, lots of questions. And uh, one thing that I kept hearing, especially from people who deal in antiques and who were uh, looking to pick in the building and stuff, is that this thing is just too big. Nobody would want it. It's not worth having. Uh, but those same people were willing to buy it. <laughs> So, uh, the general consensus was that it's just too big. Nobody can fit it in their house and there's not a buyer for it. And, uh, you know, I should be willing to sell it super cheap. And uh, I don't want to do that. And so, there was a little story I want to share with you. I went to Round Top, Texas to the antique uh, show. They have it several times a year. And it's a gigantic antique show. Probably a lot of you watching this video have been there or seen it. And... Uh, so I went there because I wanted to do research. Part of, uh, my story is that I'm interested in importing antiques from Poland and Eastern Europe, Central Europe, uh, and I want to do a showroom here at the factory someday when the building is all up to code and weatherized and cleaned out. And I think it would be a beautiful place for maybe like a wedding rental place. I mean, reception rentals or... Uh, you know, full of industrial lighting. And anyway, I'm getting off point. 
so I wanted to go to Round Top to just look at what you know antiques are priced at and to do research and to learn something and talk to dealers and because it's kind of my dream is to take uh, a container of antiques there and sell them so uh, yeah so I went to Round Top and one of the things I wanted to do was specifically check out these old general store cabinets these gigantic ones and I wanted to see uh, what they were priced at and if people were actually selling them. So when I went, uh, I saw about seven of them and they were kind of the whole gamut. They were like kind of smaller and more humble, kind of less this. And uh, they also had the big pieces like this. And this one's pretty spectacular. I would give it like a B plus, if not an A minus. Uh, but they had everything, including a few that were just out of this world. And the price ranges were starting at around $7,000, and uh, they were up to like $32,000, I think, was the most expensive one. And uh, so I was there pretty early in the show. I was there for the whole time. And I took a little notepad and wrote down the prices. And I thought, well, I'm going to come back at the end of the show and see if they sold or you know, just talk with the dealers. And I started noticing about halfway through the show that they were showing sold stickers on them. So uh, it didn't take till the end and they all sold out. Though I think the, the very most expensive one didn't sell. Uh, but they all sold for between like seven and $25,000. So there are buyers. I think the difference is that there is a place where interior designers, people with gigantic projects come and it's possible to uh, sell there. The challenge for me would be, how would I get this there? And then I have two more, actually, uh, which I'll uh, put in a future video. I got three of them. It would be pretty much, you know, a 30-foot trailer would be packed to the brim just in these pieces of furniture. So I don't know how realistic that is, uh, something I'll have to think about. And uh, yeah, but there are buyers and they can bring really good money. I just don't know what I'm gonna ask for this. Uh, and I don't know if I'll be able to take it to Texas or not, to be honest, because I don't have the uh, the trailer and stuff yet. But uh, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting uh, thing because here locally in central Illinois, uh, you could never get the kind of prices you can in Texas at that antique show where the professional buyers are. Sales only happen when there's a bargain to be had around here. So, uh, yeah, I can't uh, hold out for my dream price on it here locally. So, anyway, uh, let's get back to the restoration and you can see the whole thing complete because it's pretty awesome. So glad that that's done and uh, it's all repaired and put back together. There's a few trim pieces I need to cut and stain. Um, maybe I can just show you here real quick. There's a corner piece up there and there's one on the other side that needs to be done. But other than that, yeah, I think it's pretty good for what it is. It has uh, scars, it has marks that show its life and its story and its history. And uh, I'm not gonna be too aggressive with getting all that out because I just love the way it looks as it is. So thank you guys so much for coming here and checking this out and doing this with me. and. Uh, I'll see you on the next project or the next day that I'm doing projects here at the, uh, at the factory. So <sighs> thanks again, and I'll talk to you soon.